I'm not at the end yet, you know, I still have room to improve. I think as a, as a woman, when you have like a goal, it helps you to keep on the right path, it teaches you like discipline and yeah, you can achieve anything through hard work. You train hard, get fit to the race and then show what you prepared. Even the races can get you like quite a bit of, you know, sometimes afraid or like you have a lot of pressure. It's still what you do it for. What do you, what do you say to yourself in moments when you're like, I am tired, I want to give up? Well, I would say toughen the fuck up for some. <laughs> My goal was always to, to be fast and to do it well. When I was 18, I wanted to finish my high school and then go to Olympics. That was then where I started to see that it's possible and two years later then it happened. 25 was a hard age for me because that was just after the Olympics in London. I was not in a good place, I was, I was after my sickness. And I actually, that's where I almost quit. And then I started training with Brett Sutton in the end of 2013. I don't know if I would have gone into Ironman, to be honest. He was really the one who believed in me when it all started and pushed me a bit out of my comfort zone. You did your workout today. Of course, I was like I was doing the swim and the bike, and then I was leading. And I mean, you can't really stop when you're leading. So, you know that moment when you surprise yourself. I was just like overwhelmed how my body could cope with that. So that was um, quite an experience. And yeah, then the start to a new career. I don't like getting up early, to be honest. <laughs> That's the hardest part about racing, I believe, to get up so early. You train hard three times a day, get fit to the race and then show what you prepare. This already started when I was really young, where I trained with older athletes. I was maybe 14, 15 and I trained with 17, 18 year olds. I just measured myself with them and I wanted to get there. So I just loved that process. At home, I actually sometimes start training at eight and then do the second session around 11, 30, 12 ish. The last session I do around four till six. In the end, it doesn't really matter when you do it, you just have to do it and the day has 24 hours. It's very important as an athlete to have an inner motivation. You always have the two voices in your head. You can't really switch them off. The doubts, they can be there. But of course, it's how you manage them. I don't know if I can make it to the finish or I don't know if I went too hard. I don't know if I can keep going that hard. I'm too exhausted. It's then how you manage these thoughts and the best way is to think positive. That's what I try to do. I then try to kind of trick myself. It's very interesting how you can overcome your brain. If you're alone out there in Kona on the bike and you feel tired, it's very easy to just go a bit slower. That's where, yeah, where the difference happens. If you can keep yourself concentrated and your mind's intact and in a, in a good spirit. I think it's motivating to see what other people are capable of. That's why I always also enjoy watching the men. I compare my time sometimes with the men to just see, am I moving closer to them or not? And is there still room for improvement? If I see Jan Frodino running a 109 in a half marathon, then I'm like, well, you know, in the same race I ran maybe 118. I thought I can still be a bit faster than that. It's too much of a gap to Jan Frodino. So this just motivates me and I, I think that's where I take my energy and motivation from to keep working hard and keep improving. As an athlete I'm definitely very driven and very focused. As a woman when you have like a goal it helps you to keep on the right path, it teaches you discipline and yeah you can achieve anything through hard work. I think 
to be great, it needs more than just an ability. Have you aspired to greatness, like consciously? That's a hard one. <laughs> I think wanting to be great is the wrong goal. It's more than just abilities. It's also getting it right. When I look at really amazing athletes, I feel like they're all a little bit extraordinary. It's the same in business when I meet really successful CEOs. They're just very driven, just a bit more driven than a normal manager or a normal businessman. Lots of people could be great and will never be great because they don't want it enough or they don't have the consistency or the will to work as hard as it needs to be. I was always open for different paths. For me, I just it just happened to become a professional athlete. I never had the goal to become world champion. I just, it happened. <laughs> My goals now, it's a good question because I don't really have any goals anymore. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I never really grow up as, as like having a hero in my head saying I want to be like her or him. Miranda Carefree, she set the uh, standards in the, in the running to see what's capable of. That's motivating. I look up to athletes who also do something great next to their success. Roger Federer to me is, is the greatest of all time also because he's having you know, his charity and, and trying to change something in the world for good. If you start to feel too comfortable with what you have, you will lose the, the eager and the drive. 2014, I didn't really plan on racing Ironman and then my coach was kind of pushing me into it. I didn't really feel really ready for it. I, I was outrun by Miranda Carefree in the last three, four, five Ks of the race and I was leading most of the race. It was a hard loss. I just really wanted to win there. And if you really want to win, that's not really a nice way to race. You've put a lot of pressure on yourself. That year in 2015, I just knew I, I need to win that race. Otherwise, I might never win it. Then to actually do it, yeah, that felt amazing. It was a great relief and also to actually reach what you dreamed of is the kind of the performance I, I wanted to show. You did come out in the news recently mm -hmm. and I'm curious, what has that been like for you? I didn't really have too much expectations, to be honest. For me, it was more about the labeling, saying that everyone should be able to live how they feel like, to encourage people to not kind of get trapped in a label. Definitely had a bit of response and I, I'm, I'm feeling happy that people understood the message. I kind of came out because I just wanted to not make it a thing. I had lots of other things happening and I thought, look, I want to open up a bit more about myself and what I went through the last years. I mean, I'm fine with anyone who doesn't agree. I don't need the okay from everyone. <laughs> People get fascinated by triathlon. It's definitely also something I enjoy seeing. And our sport is not super old yet, but it still has quite a bit of history. And the women and men in our sport have, have done amazing things. I, for example, believe Natasha Batman did amazing things for the sport. There, I don't know even if I did that much yet for the sport. Our sport is still developing. And when I look back the last five years, it's amazing already the change in material and professionality and I believe it's still going to develop so it's important to have young hungry athletes who also want to be part of it and take their opportunities. Now seeing the times developing for the women especially I still feel like we can go better and we can go faster than we have done so far. That to me is then kind of the greatness to see how our body is able to cope with so much. 
I definitely feel like it gave me a, a lesson for life and I'm not too worried about after. I mean, definitely there will be new things and in general it's kind of broad, you know, you have to think a bit wider than just swim, bike and run, you know. Triathlon is quite complex even for the training and everything, so I definitely feel like it's a, it's a great school for life, yeah. When did you know you could be like the best in the world at this sport? When I was the best. 